Hey everyone and welcome back to another skill in the SP Auto course here on CBT Nuggets. Okay, so what we're going to focus in on in this skill right here is all around the concept of APIs. Now, if you don't know what an API is, do not worry. We're going to go through all of the details that we have to understand for the purposes of the SP Auto examination. So with that said, let's dive on in and begin. Now, the first thing that I should just say straight off the bat is an API happens to be known as an application programming interface. This is what the API actually stands for, the acronym. Now, that doesn't really tell us much about what an API is in real terms. What does it actually do for us? Why are they so important? So here is the deal with APIs. If you happen to have some type of application, so this could be a little app over here. And let's say we have another app, a completely different app. If we want to facilitate the communication between these applications so that they can ultimately talk to one another, then an API can act as a type of middleman between these two applications, in effect, allowing this app to push information into this app or to, if it so wishes, read and consume resources that are provided or services, should I say, provided by this application. So again, this probably is really quite abstract. How about we look at a more general real world analogy? Now the classic analogy when it comes to APIs is the analogy of a restaurant. Now it happens to be very, very useful. So this is how I want to explain it to you. So imagine this then, you happen to be the client, okay? Remember we have this client server architecture. So imagine you as the client happen to walk into a restaurant. So here you are here and you go into your favorite restaurant, whatever it may be. Now the restaurant and this type of analogy, this is going to be the server. And like I say, you over here will be the client. Now think about it like this. When you go into the restaurant, you sit down and really what you're looking for from the restaurant is to be able to consume what they have to offer, i.e. what type of food they are offering, what type of drinks they are offering. Now, the key distinction here is that once you are inside of that restaurant, you really don't have to deal with all of the deep details of how that restaurant is actually operating behind closed doors. So what do I mean when I say that? So really within this restaurant here, we may have a general area whereby all the customers are sitting. Here are all these tables here. And behind some type of door, you're going to have a kitchen where all types of madness are taking place. We're going to have chefs running up and down, checking timers. They're putting things into ovens, pulling things back out of ovens, ultimately preparing all of this food that you're going to consume, as well as all of the other customers. Now, like I say, you as a general patron within this restaurant, you actually have no real awareness of what is going on in the kitchen here. You don't know how many chefs there are, who is the head chef, maybe it's Gordon Ramsay, <laughs> we don't actually know. You don't know who is washing plates, who has been tasked with handling the desserts. Again, none of this is of any importance or concern to you. Instead, the way you interact with this restaurant is really going to be through a waiter. So a waiter is going to come to you as you are seated at your table. Maybe they will give you a menu, surely. And as you look throughout this menu, you see all of the services, so to speak, that this restaurant is offering. Now, if you want to be able to get some type of service, i.e. maybe you want to order some pasta, then again, how do you actually get that pasta? You just send that request to the waiter and the waiter will go back to the back room where the kitchen is, ultimately inform the kitchen of what new order has came in. And behind the scenes, all of this magic is going to happen that you don't actually see or have to be concerned with that ultimately will produce that lovely pasta that you want to eat. And again, they will give it to the waiter and the waiter will deliver that pasta directly onto your table whereby you can therefore consume it. So really what I am trying to highlight here is that all the back-end operations 
all of that is completely hidden from you. It has been totally abstracted. It's not part of the process at all from your perspective as the client. The only thing you are really dealing with is this waiter who is going to be the restaurant's API. This is who the restaurant elects to present their services to the public. And that is the only person that we as the consumers of this restaurant, that is the only one we actually interface with. We interface and interact with the waiter alone. We're not talking to the chefs, we're not talking to the dishwashers. And in fact, if the kitchen happens to be pretty bogged down, let's imagine there is a lot of chaos going on within this kitchen right here. And let's say we are waiting an hour for our pasta. We could actually send another request to the API, to the waiter, asking the waiter for an update of when our food can be expected. And the waiter can run back to the kitchen and say, hey everyone, can I get an update on this pasta order? We've been waiting quite a while, in which case, the waiter can therefore relay that information back to us and say, hey, it will be five more minutes. Now, this might seem a little bit strange, but this is really kind of how software actually works. We have code in the background, which has been developed by developers. This would be like the kitchen, okay? So we've got all this complex code, but as the user of that code, i.e. the client here who's making the order, we don't actually need to care about all of that complexity. Instead, when we want to utilize the services that this code provides, the way we interact or interface with that code base is via the waiter, i.e. the API. Now, when some type of software happens to introduce an API, you're going to find that they're going to provide some type of documentation. And this is why API documentation, as you will eventually see, is so, so important because the documentation is going to tell us exactly how to interact with the API, which ultimately allows to consume the services of that software in an easy and simplified manner. So really by presenting an API to the end user, it's going to open up a whole world of possibilities for people and other applications as well to enjoy our services and code base. So as a quick example, if I happen to pull up my web browser and I'm just going to search for Dropbox API Explorer, again, you can choose many different APIs. Let me just zoom in here a little bit. I happen to find that the Dropbox API happens to be very well documented. So check this out if you want to happen to programmatically interact with Dropbox. Check this down the side here. We can see all of these different options. If I go to say, for example, templates add for user. What I can do here is I can see show code and I can view it as a, what is called a curl request, which is a command line utility to make HTTP requests. Or if I wish I could have an example of some Python code, which again shows me some code as to how to actually programmatically retrieve that particular piece of information. Now, right now, this type of code may be pretty confusing. It may be pretty intimidating, but what we're going to see here is actually going to make much more sense by the end of the scale. We're going to see things such as headers, which we will talk about. We can see here what is called the resource or the path which we are targeting. And in fact, what we're seeing here actually is a REST API. And this is something, in fact, oh, let me just change the color of that. It's not quite so good. A REST API. And we'll get to discuss what a REST API is very, very shortly. Now, really what I just want to highlight here is that the purpose of the API is to simplify the interaction between different code bases, i.e. different applications, or you as a human user wanting to consume particular services from a particular application via the API is the way we're going to be able to talk to that software in an organized and simplified way. And this is exactly how your phone actually operates. If you happen to check and look at some of the widgets on your phone, say for example, maybe you have some type of Fitbit app, which is actually pulling data programmatically from other sources of information, pulling information from your Apple phone, from some type of weather application, which actually tracks the weather in, say for example, Wyoming, or say for example, in Glasgow, Scotland. The way your phone developed by Apple can consume the services of maybe some type of Fitbit application or weather application 
is because these APIs are ultimately facilitating the connection and the communication between these disparate and different code bases. So this really is why APIs are so, so powerful and are a big, big part of the modern network automation landscape. Now, we just mentioned something called a REST API. Now, the REST API is an absolutely massive mammoth in the world of APIs. It's so, so popular. And the thing is, this is something we absolutely have to know about. But the question is, what exactly is a REST API? Well, the good news is, is that that is what we're going to be talking about in the very next nuggets. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.